Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we're going to be taking on this absolutely amazing integral that you can see on the screen. That's the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of natural log of tangent of x minus or plus 1 over 1 minus tangent of x. And we're going to be using the digamma function a lot in this video. And something else we're going to be using um, is, as you can see, at some point in the integration we're going to end up with a double summation with a double integral inside, which I just think is absolutely marvelous and so cool so fun to deal with. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at those. And let's go ahead and jump into the uh, proofs and values that we're going to need in this video. So um, one thing that we are going to need is for a convergent summation, sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times a n. This is going to be the same as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a 2 n minus a 2 n plus 1. And you can see we're just taking all the positive terms and all the negative terms, right? And obviously the original summation has to be absolutely convergent with the limit as a n goes to infinity tending to zero for this to work. Something else we're going to be using is that the integral from zero to one of x to the b, db, uh, db, uh, b is just a dummy variable I like to use, is going to be x minus one over ln x, something we've used many times in previous videos and we're going to use again here. And finally, the only other thing we're going to need is are some specific values of the digamma function. I'm not going to prove them right here, but I have a video that you can watch which will show you exactly how to calculate values of the digamma function. Um, not specifically those values, but it shows you the general process. So we're going to be using that digamma of 1 half equals negative 2 ln 2 uh, minus gamma and digamma of 1 fourth equals minus gamma minus 3 ln 2 uh, minus pi over 2. I believe those are the correct values and we're going to need those later on. So let's go ahead and jump right into the integration. So starting with our original integral, we're going to make the obvious substitution u equals tangent x, um, which is generally going to be the case if everything's in terms of tangent x because 1 over x squared minus 1 works quite nicely with these other functions. So u equals tangent x and then um, when, once we reorganize some, everything, we're going to get that dx equals 1 over 1 plus u squared du. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 1. 1 over ln u plus 1 over 1 minus u, all multiplied by 1 over u squared plus 1 du. Now we're going to go ahead and reorganize things. We want to use our identity with u minus 1 over ln u. So let's go ahead and multiply by, by u minus 1 on the inside here. So we're going to get u minus 1 over ln u, and then minus 1 right here, and then we just need to remember to divide outside. So we're going to reorganize this. We're going to get u minus 1 times u squared plus 1. And this is where it starts to get interesting, because we're going to rewrite this as the integral from 0 to 1 of u to the b dB, and this is the integral from 0 to 1 of negative 1 dB. So overall, we can just combine those two integrals, and we're going to get the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to 1 of u to the b minus 1, and then we can just bring this all inside the integral since u is constant with respect to b. So we're going to get over u minus 1 times u squared plus 1 d, uh, b du. Now, hopefully this right here, u to the b minus 1, should uh, remind you guys of a super common uh, u to the b minus 1 over u minus 1 of a, of a common representation for the digamma function. Digamma of z equals the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x to the z minus 1 over 1 minus x dx minus gamma. And we're going to go ahead and use that, but of course we can't use that because we have this pesky u squared plus 1 right here. So we're not actually going to be directly using the formula, but we're going to follow similar ideas. So we're going to expand 1 over 1, over 1 plus u squared as a power series. So what that's going to look like is we're going to now have the summation from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, times the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to 1 of u to the b minus 1 over u minus 1, which I'll actually flip the signs there and make those a little bit backwards so that we have 1 over 1 minus u for later. So 1 minus u to the b over 1 minus u times u to the 2n. And notice that this, when combined with this, will just give us 1 uh, 1 over 1 plus u squared. And again, we're going to switch the order of integration here because it's going to be more useful to integrate on u first before we integrate with respect to b. So du, db. And of course, that's totally justified in this case because this is all positive. So 
you don't have to worry about absolute values and that sort of stuff. So now the trouble is we can't use our little digamma trick because we have this u to the 2n, but we can follow the same principle and we can actually expand again with a power series with 1 over 1 minus u. So this is going to get a little bit hectic, so I'm going to go ahead and try to explain each step as carefully as I can. So we're expanding this as a power series, so we're going to end up with a sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times the sum, or I guess this is inside the summation uh, of n, so sum from k equals 0 to infinity times the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus u to the b times u to the 2n plus k, because now we have u to the k multiplied by all of this, and again we're going to put du dp. And so overall, um, I'm going to ignore the summations here, and we're just going to focus on this integral on the inside. We have integral from 0 to 1 of u to the 2n plus k minus u to the 2n plus k plus b du. So when we integrate this, this is just going to end up being 1 over 2n plus k plus 1 minus 1 over 2n plus k plus b plus 1. So let's go ahead and apply that. Okay, so now we have this nice form for our uh, summations and integral. And before you guys call me out on this, um, I just want to go ahead and say that I'm not a pure math kind of guy. I'm not really familiar with all the Fubini's theorems and uh, dominated convergence and all that sort of stuff. So I'm probably going to do something here that isn't entirely justified, or I'm not going to be able to justify it myself. Um, that's just the way I do things. So I apologize to any to anyone who's offended by that. But I'm just going to go ahead and exchange the order of integration and summation right here. So. Um, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times the integral from 0 to 1. And actually, I'm going to bring this integral all the way outside of the n summation. So I'm going to double exchange the integrals here. And we're going to get the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 2n plus k plus 1 minus 1 over 2n plus k plus b plus 1. Uh, and then all of this is going to be db. So now I'm just going to use a really simple and straightforward identity. Uh, this isn't something I included at the beginning because it's really not even an identity. It's kind of just basic logic. We have that digamma of uh, a minus digamma of b is just going to be equal to the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of uh, 1 over k plus b minus 1 over k plus a. And the justification behind this is just that this is going to expand into negative gamma plus sum of n equals 0 to infinity, 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus a, or you could use k. And then this is going to expand into almost exactly the same thing, so that the gammas are going to cancel, this part's going to cancel, and we're just going to end up with, uh, this is a, we're just going to end up with minus n plus a, or k plus a, and k plus b. So um, I'm not going to, I'm going to use this formula several times uh, during this derivation right here. So Using this, we can see that this summation from k equals 0 to infinity is just going to be equal to, it's just going to be equal to this. So sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times negative digamma of 2n plus 1 plus digamma of 2n plus b plus 1. Let me go. So I'm just going to go ahead and call uh, this inside bit f of b, and we're going to calculate f of b, and then we'll integrate it from 0 to 1 afterwards. And now this is a really handy trick that you can use whenever you have a summation that looks like this, negative 1 to the n times digamma of a n plus b minus digamma of a n plus c. You're going to want to do exactly this. Use that formula that we showed at the beginning, um, where we had the sum from, of negative 1 to the n times a n. So we're going to go ahead and apply that. We're just going to add the evens and subtract the odds on the inside. So on the inside, again, we're going to have, that's where n is an even number, so that's going to be 4n plus b plus 1, and then minus digamma of 4n plus 1. Then we're going to subtract the odd values, which is when n equals 2n plus 1, or I guess, yeah, we're, we're replacing n with 2n plus 1 everywhere. So minus digamma of 4n plus b plus 2, or actually it should be plus 3 in this situation. And then again, minus digamma of 4n plus 3. All right, that's looking pretty nice. Uh, this is actually going to be positive since we're subtracting and then we're subtracting again. Now we're going to go ahead and um, 
use our digamma um, recurrence relation, which is that digamma of x plus 1 uh, equals digamma of x plus 1 over x, which means that digamma of x plus 2 equals digamma of x plus 1 over x plus 1 over x plus 1. And we're going to go ahead and match up this with this and then match up this with this. So we're going to get sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 4n plus b plus 1 plus 1 over 4n plus b plus 2 minus uh, 1 over 4n plus, oh wait, these should be negative actually, and the other ones are going to be positive. So we're going to have plus 1 over 4n plus 1 uh, plus 1 over 4n plus 2. And then we're just going to divide by 4 everywhere just to make everything nice and neat. So we're going to get this on all of our factors right here, or all of our terms right here, n plus 1 fourth and n plus 1 half. And then we're just going to use that rule that we proved earlier uh, when we're subtracting digamma functions and we're going to apply uh, that to this. So if we match up these two right here, we're going to find that we're just going to have a digamma of this minus this. So that's going to be digamma or I guess we're looking only at this value right here. So b plus 2 over 4 minus digamma uh, 1 fourth. And then we're going to have, again, we're going to match up this and this. So we're going to be adding digamma of b plus 1 over 4 minus digamma of 1 half. And all of this is multiplied by 1 fourth. And that's our function f of b, which we're going to integrate from 0 to 1. So we have 1 fourth times integral from 0 to 1, di gamma b plus 1 over 4, b plus 2 over 4, and then minus, we just have di gamma of 1 half and di gamma of 1 fourth, uh, which when we integrate them, they're just going to stay the same. So we can go ahead and just take that outside of the integral, right? We don't need to worry about that. So we're just subtracting 1 fourth di gamma 1 fourth plus di gamma 1 half, which we'll calculate afterwards. Over here, uh, this 1 fourth is going to match up with our differential since we're dividing b over 4, so we don't really need to worry about that. And we're just going to get uh, natural log of gamma of b plus 1 over 4 um, times gamma of b plus 2 over 4, evaluated at 1 and at 0. Uh, that's just integrating the, remember that the digamma function is the derivative of the natural log of the gamma function. So when we evaluate that, we're going to get natural log of gamma 1 half times gamma of 3 fourths over gamma of 1 fourth times gamma of 1 half. So we can just go ahead and cancel out the gamma 1 halves. And then let's go ahead and substitute in our value of minus 1 fourth uh, negative 2 gamma minus 5 ln 2 minus pi over 2. So overall, our final answer is going to be natural log gamma of 3 fourths over gamma of 1 fourth minus gamma over 2 plus 5 fourths ln 2. I guess this is also positive plus pi over 8. What a magnificent result to an absolutely beautiful integral. Um, I would like to say that you can simplify this answer further using the reflection property. You can like multiply by the, on the top and bottom by gamma of 1 fourth, but I think that this is a relatively straightforward and um, easy representation of this answer, so I'm going to leave it as is. I hope you guys enjoyed this absolutely marvelous integral. This is honestly one of the, my favorite integrals that I've solved uh, on this channel because it just has such a nice solution going through that double summation and double integration and then just everything simplifies down to digamma functions as always so i hope you guys enjoyed this video um and if you want to see more content like this go check out my channel or uh leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions and yeah hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time